kioni o kakui hewa, ka moku o kona, ke ahupua o kapaalama, mai ka aina i kapa ia o ka iwi ula, ka aina hoili na akiali i pauahi, velina me ke aloha i a kakoa pau. On behalf of the Bernice Pauahi Bishop Museum and the Kealakai Center for Pacific Strings, welcome to Kaula Piko, Le'a Ike Kani. This evening, we are proud to bring to you the unique sounds of string instruments that when heard together make a very distinct kani, or sound that arguably cannot be found anywhere else in the world except for Hawaii. This concert brings to life our latest exhibit, Kaula Piko, Source of Strings, which highlights the lesser known stories of our innovative kupuna who have created and made popular some of the stringed instruments you'll hear tonight. More importantly, tonight's concert will showcase how this story of Kaula Piko continues to be perpetuated by some of our most esteemed musicians today. We would like to take this time to extend a heartfelt mahalo nui to our sponsors of tonight's concert, Surfco Pacific and Morgan Stanley. Tonight's video production is provided by Olelo Community Media. Olelo Community Media is about free speech. They make it easy to share your uncensored voice with the community using state-of-the-art video equipment and facilities at six locations around the island. If you need training, they offer courses that will help you shoot and produce programs just like the pros. But Olelo is not just for adults. Their popular year-round jam youth program trains students to use video to express themselves. Throughout 2020, Olelo has been hard at work delivering hours upon hours of virtual programming to your homes, from graduation programs, to legislative hearings, to community talk shows, and to election. Check out what they have to offer at olelo.org. You can also see their programming on YouTube, Facebook, as well as the Olelo mobile app. As you can see, we're broadcasting today's program from my home in respect for the shelter in place directive so that you can meet the people who continue to make a difference in our everyday lives. Tonight is a celebration of a long-running and enduring legacy in the Hawaiian musical arts, a legacy that today has entwined the world in Hawaiian song and string. Gathered here at the historic Bishop Museum's Kaulapiko exhibition is a family of stringed instruments never before seen together in one place. As co-curator of this exhibition, I am proud that Kaulapiko has united the resources of Iolani Palace, Hulihe'e Palace, Kamehameha Schools, the Hawaii State Archives and Bishop Museum to illuminate Hawaii as the Western Hemisphere's vibrant epicenter of innovation and influence in modern music. From the instruments of His Royal Highness Mo'i Kalakaua, Eleanor Kekoa Uhivai Kalani Wright Prendergast, to the, pika, to the pila of Gabi Pahinui, Eddie Kamai, Feet Rogers, and Johnny Cash, to the indigenous Hawaiian Ukeke, Ipuheke, Dreadnought Martin and Fender Stratocaster, we invite you tonight to join us as we journey to the source of strings. Stringed instruments are not unlike canoes, really. Both begin their lives as trees in forests, standing proud and tall through sun and storm. Their timbers are gathered by master craftspeople and shaped into wooden wave-riding vessels. Canoes designed to traverse the ocean's currents and tides, stringed instruments to ride sound waves, in, on, and through time. Within these vessels, the vision, the voice of Hawaii come to know no limits of time and space. And it is through them that we hear and know all that has come before 
and envision all that is yet to come. But like the Hokulea, every musical vessel requires a master navigator capable of leading us to that which lies unseen beyond the horizon and returning us home again. We have asked of who we have just such master navigators and musicians to bring these instruments to life in song and story tonight. And out of all the great stars in the Hawaiian music skies, few have shown as bright and long as Ledward Kapapana, the grand master of Kihoalu. Ledward's musical voyages have become the things of legend. He has charted more soundscapes than most would ever imagine possible. From his work with country superstars, Alison Krauss, Ricky Skaggs, and Jerry Douglas, to his family music of Hui Ohana and Kalapana's leading musicians. It's our great honor to welcome to the stage tonight, Ledward Kaapana. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown and I am the Bishop Museum Historian and we're here in the Kaulapiko, the Source of Strings exhibit and here with me is the co-curator of this exhibit, who you've already seen tonight, Kylan Reese. Hello, How do you DeSoto. do, Kylan? I'm doing well, thank you so much. You know, one of my favorite things about this exhibition is this interactive yep. steel guitar, the Hawaiian steel guitar, which as we're going to learn tonight, really began here at the campus of what is now Bishop Museum. That's right. Of course, in 1892, it wasn't the Bishop Museum only, it was also... Kamehameha School for Boys campus. Mm. And you know what? This interactive electric steel guitar can make some pretty cool sure noises. <laughs> <laughs> this is 
truly one of the coolest instruments in the whole world. And within this one instrument, really, a young man named Joseph Kekuku, who was a student here at Kamehameha Schools, synthesized all of the diversity of stringed instruments in the Hawaiian kingdom into one cohesive guitar style that went on to take over the world. It did. And you know, this was not just a one-time thing. This was a cumulative process. And that's one of the things that we talk about in this exhibit. Right. We show people and we explain to people it goes from this stage to this stage to this stage. And that's one of the things that not only are we showing them pictures and not only are we telling them in words, the instruments themselves are here. The instruments tell the story, don't they? The really instruments cool. tell the story, and it isn't just the instruments. The people who owned those instruments or still own them now, right. in many cases, are very significant figures. So we've been able to put together, primarily through your context and the people you know, this fantastic exhibit. And, and who are we about to hear on stage well, now? Well, this is one of the, the true legends in Hawaiian music, carrying on a tradition of not only playing masterfully, but also teaching as a great kumu. Uh, Alan Akaka has ta taught thousands of people over the years to play Hawaiian steel guitar, ukulele, bass, guitar, through his Kekula Mele Hawaii. Alan Akaka is such a treasure, and we're so thrilled to introduce him to you right now. You know, DeSoto, one thing I love about the Hawaiian steel guitar that not everybody knows the first electric guitar ever made was a Hawaiian lap steel guitar. That is one of the stories that we're telling here in this exhibit, and that's something that most people do not know. Yeah. Everybody knows what an electric guitar sounds like. Everybody has heard rock and roll. Everybody's heard heavy metal. All of those things depend upon the electric guitar. Right. But the predecessor of the electric guitar, before there was a Jimi Hendrix, there was the acoustic steel guitar invented by Joseph K. Kuku here on Oahu, mm -hmm. then the electric steel, and then the electric guitar. That's right. So now it's time for the, oh no, it's not time yet. <laughs> They're working out a few bugs. Um, one other thing I love about the, the uh, steel guitar, as soon as you hear it, you know you're in Hawaii. That's right. It's just one of those sounds. That's right. Now we're ready for Alan. Let's go to the stage and let's hear Alan Akaka.
at this time, it takes great pleasure to introduce one of the youngest steel guitar players now who's playing. And uh, she can sing, she can play the ukulele, she can play the bass. Uh, she can play pretty much any instrument she picks up, but the one thing that she picks up and she just brings out its own voice is a Hawaiian steel guitar. And so we have here a young, uh, uh, the great granddaughter of Auntie Genoa Keabe. Right. The great granddaughter. Yes, yes. And tis, this is Malia Lyman. And I'd also like to bring up her mother, too, and the granddaughter of Auntie Genoa Keabe. And she, she has a gorgeous voice, and um, she's so smart. I think she went to Punahou. <laughs> she's so. <laughs> she, <laughs> you know how I can tell because her English is perfect. Okay, that's one way. Okay, but ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce now um, Mandy, or Paul Mike Kai. Sorry, I call, I, I've called you Mandy for all these years, yeah. But uh, she goes by Paul Mike Kai Keave Lyman. Aloha Mai Kako. Mahalo Nui for having us here today. Um, we are very blessed and honored to be here to celebrate Kaula Pico and the source of where strings come from. And, you know, we've been blessed to be able to learn, have our daughter learn from one of Hawaii's master steel guitarists, Alan Akaka. And so we're going to have them share with you today um, a little bit of what she's been able to do in the past seven years. See, I told you she speaks English quite well. <laughs>
beautiful song called Beautiful Kahana. And, you know, we acknowledge that we are here today because of our kupuna and our tutu, uh, tutu man, we called him, Edward Puniwai Kiave Aiko, comes from the Valley of Kahana. And so um, that's a song that we've always done as Ohana to honor that place that he comes from. And our other kupuna is none other than, we call her Tutu, but Genoa Keave. And um, she's another reason that we're here. And so this next song we do to honor her. And once again, we'd like to thank you all for having us here. And Kumu Allen Akaka for teaching Malie all that she knows on the steel guitar. Um, Malie Makoko. <laughs>
Hey everybody, I'm DeSoto Brown again, and we're here in Hawaiian Hall. We have been listening to magnificent music, and particularly hearing Alika was magnificent. But we're here in a magnificent setting for this music as well. This is Hawaiian Hall. This is the centerpiece of Bishop Museum. Many of you are familiar with it. Everybody knows this is where the whale is, and the whale is up there, still hanging from the ceiling, where he has been for over a century. We say that Hawaiian, the Hawaiian Hall complex is the centerpiece of Bishop Museum, and it looks like it's one big building. Construction on it started way back over 125 years ago. It's actually three buildings that were built over a period of about 10 years. And here in Hawaiian Hall, we are in the biggest part of this. And this is, this, was, this building was completed in 1900, but it took them three years to fill in, to install all the cases that you see on all three floors and to install all the exhibits. Hawaiian Hall is still with us today. It underwent a magnificent refurbishing back from 2005 up to 2013. And all new exhibits were installed. Beautiful renovation was done of this magnificent building, which you could never replicate today. Hawaiian Hall is also a wonderful location for concerts. When the Kaula Pico exhibit was created, Kylan and I were hoping to have a whole series of concerts to celebrate it. COVID came along, it wasn't possible to do that. Instead, we've been able to put on this concert for you tonight in this wonderful place. If you have not visited Bishop Museum recently, please, by all means, come and see it. Come visit us. You can see it right now on television. There's nothing like coming and seeing it for yourself in person to see this beautiful place and to learn, to be entertained, to see what has come from our ancestors that we learn from, that we still carry on today. The music that we're carrying on, that we're hearing right now, in many cases came from people in the far distant past and has come to us now. But we're still living it and we're still learning from it and we're still keeping it going because it's part of our culture. That's what Bishop Museum's entire focus is to continue to teach, to continue to tell people, to continue to show things to people, and for people to learn and to experience all of this stuff. And it's right here around us in, in Bishop Museum here in Hawaiian Hall. You let me know when we're ready to go. Are we ready to go? Okay, let's continue the concert. Thanks for joining us. Oh, 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 oh,
Okay, that was uh, Heloha no o Honolulu, and that was written by Lot Kawe, and he was a man that was from originally from South Kona, but he did some uh, work in uh, Honolulu proper, and I, I chose to pick that song because uh, my family is uh, from uh, originally from uh, the wharf where um, Honolulu Harbor is, right across where now the uh, Aloha Tower is located at, and that place where we were from was called Kapu Ukolu, and uh, it's where you know all of uh, the, the real close uh, people to Kamehameha. They all their families lived in that area, so we lived near uh, Don Paula Marin's uh, family, Naiole, who was the family that took care of Kamehameha, John Young, the Davises. They all, they all lived in this same area. And that's why I did that song. Because it talks about starting out in, a, in Honolulu proper, which is what they called, my family always called themselves from the place where the rain is called Ku Kaulahale, which is uh, where the rain is from in that area. And that it ends up going to the, the boat you're on, would end up in uh, South Kona, in the Kona district but passing through uh, Maui. That, that's what that song is about. Aloha no Honolulu. The next song I'm going to do is a song that's really near to my heart because it's a song that was taught to me by the composer. His name is uh, Kahau Anulik. And um, he was uh, one of my mentors, and this is one of the songs that he wrote. He wrote the music and he wrote the words. And um, he had the help with his uh, mentor of the language and the culture, uh, Kavenu Pukui, Tupaka, or the Hawaiians call to share and to improve and to make something better. And so um, this song is dedicated to him, one of my mentors.
Wow, DeSoto, I have to say that was a dream come true to hear Doug Poloa Tolentino and Leverd Ka'apana singing that song. Wow, doesn't mm -hmm. get any better than that. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and as I said to somebody else just earlier, the fact that they're doing it in Hawaiian Hall is pretty meaningful for me personally, yeah, yeah. and it's a magnificent and wonderful place for a concert to occur. You know, the Bishop Museum today has so much history. I always think back to the, the beginning of Bishop Museum uh, in Kamehameha schools at that time under the patronage of Bernice Poahi Bishop. Mm -hmm. But her uh, resources were donated to her by uh, Princess Ruth Ke'ili Kolani. That's right. And Princess Ruth Ke'ili Kolani's Hanai son, William Pitt Leli Ohopu, is an absolute titan in the story of, of modern music. He founded the Kawaihau Glee Club, uniting the, the guitars, the mandolins, the banjos, and singing uh, this style of Glee Club music that changed mm -hmm. music forever. And what we're talking about here is the continuation of a lot of those traditions. And what we're standing here with is an amazing part of this entire story. That's a photograph of Mekia Kealakai, also known as Major Kealakai. Right. And in 1915, unless I am mistaken, he ordered from the Martin Guitar Company the biggest guitar that he could get because he needed the sound. That's this right. is before there was electric amplification. Right. Well, this is a replica which you commissioned to be of that Mekia guitar. And that Mekia guitar, the specs for that turned into something that's of international importance. That is the Martin Dreadnought guitar. That's right. And if we come around to the Walk other around. side of this case, here's an example of a Martin Dreadnought guitar owned by Johnny Cash. This is an incredible story. So the Martin Dreadnought, after it, it transitioned from being called the Kealakai model, it became the most famous country western guitar. It was picked up by a man, Gene Autry, and ever since then, everybody who wanted to play or sing uh, American traditional music had to have a dreadnought guitar. And this guitar was used by Johnny Cash at Sun Records Studios, side by side <laughs> with Elvis Presley. <laughs> and you can see it started with a Hawaiian man, Mekia Keolika. That's right. Okay, we're going back to the concert now, right. and we've got Bobby Madero Jr., and we've got Kamuela Kimokeo. San Ka'ihi Kimokeo. And these guys are all signature Martin guitar artists. Uh, the last time we were hanging out together was in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, picking up the Kealakai reproduction and listening to these guys play for Chris Martin IV, <laughs> whose jaw was on the floor hearing this Hawaiian slate steel guitar music. Let's hear it. This is going to be amazing.
Blessing, blessing being here, man. <laughs> How's it to the whale and the tiger yeah. shark over here? It's a blessing. <laughs> it's a blessing being here. It's with the most Uncle intimidating Lane. audience we've ever had. Oh right? man, <laughs> it's like hallowed halls over here. <laughs> I'm like say the wrong words in this place. You're this right. What's At this time, <laughs> we're gonna call up uh, my son. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be his last show as a ten-year-old. Yeah. Right on. He's right. gonna turn eleven in ten days. Hey boy. Hey boy. Kaihi boy. So this is my son, Kaihi, and uh, we're going to get him plugged in and get him going. Plug in, my boy. So excited to be able to share uh, the Kamali'i, the young people of Hawaii, being able to share the music and the culture, uh, keeping it alive through the youth, and um, yeah, having good. Kaihi boy play with us <laughs> um, really ensures what it means that is being Hawaii and sharing it with the rest of the world. So um, thank you guys also very much for being a part of us. Showcasing uh, my nephew over here, Kaihi boy. You ready, my boy? Bus string, okay. Bus string. <laughs> Bus string, okay. Just give him, just One, give him. Okay. Oh, okay, ready, Kaihi. <laughs> Have fun, yeah? No <laughs> pressure, no pressure. <laughs>
Not bad, All not right. bad. At 10 years old, I, I knew two chords, I think, still. Yeah. Maybe three. I couldn't even, like, solve the Rubik's Cube yeah. at 10 years old. Yeah, you still cannot. I still no can, but I don't care, okay? I, I I'm knew, over it. At 10 years old, I think I knew F and second F. C7, eh? Yeah, yeah, C7, C7. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Okay, we're going to do our last song. Uh, you know, our set we had in mind, I said, Bobby, let's start with the train and go to the cars. Um, kind of like progression in transportation. Oh. And with that same idea, music has that same progression. And Hawaiians, uh, whether people know it or not, we were part of that progression as uh, this uh, exhibit has shown, the Kaulapiko exhibit. It shows that not only were we uh, progressive, but we were at the forefront of this progression and uh, leading the way with the, the progression. So here's a song that speaks about a very joyous Kailin, car ride. thank you so very much. Thank you, Olelo. We'll see you guys again soon. Aloha. Let's do it. Yep. All right. Aloha. All right. Okay, he shows what you got on the ukulele, bro. Oh, I say, Hanaho, Hanaho. Oh, I say, I say.
Step on the gas, going my way. God bless you all. Thank you very much once again. Woo! All right. Mahalo, you guys. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> If you're an aspiring musical artist or group, Olalo is offering you a chance to showcase your talents with Mele A'e. Please take a look. Aloha. If you're an aspiring musical artist or group, here's your chance to introduce your talents to all of Oahu on television. Olelo and the Summit radio stations have teamed up to present Mele Ae, an exciting new show from Olelo that showcases musical artists performing their own original songs. Filmed on Olelo's new soundstage, Studio 1122, where I shoot all my shows, Mele Ae is your chance to be discovered. So visit olelo.org auditions to submit your audition video and give your career a kickstart. I know I'll be watching. My name is Marcus Marzan. I'm the cultural advisor here at Bishop Museum. And I just wanted to share a little bit about the museum's collections currently on display in the Kaula Pico, uh, Kaula at Pico exhibition. Uh, the two pieces that we wanted to share tonight specifically are, are the two pieces here. We have the, the Ipuheke, uh, the double gourd, and the Ukeke, the Hawaiian uh, musical bowl. Um, in, in, in Hawaiian music, uh, the stringed instrument is, is an important, um, important uh, heartbeat to, to modern Hawaiian music today. Uh, but when we think about the, the early voices of, of Hawaiian music and the, and the sounds that, that created that heartbeat and rhythm, we always, we, one of the instruments we think of is the ipuheke. Um, this particular ipuheke is one of the many examples that exist in the Bishop Museum collection. Uh, and this particular one belonged to a kumuhula by the name of, by the name of Koalele. And it's quite interesting because on the ipuheke itself, you, you're able to see um, um, incised um, markings on the surface that actually write out his name. Koalele, kumuhula o Hawaii, nauna ks. And it has a silhouette of him at, right underneath. Um, so, so implements that Kumuhula used uh, in the playing of mele in, in, in conveying of those of that heartbeat of Hawaiian music at the time uh, were very special. They were oftentimes given names that, that uh, allowed them to have a, a living voice and were treated as such. And because these implements um, provided that heartbeat for the Hawaiian stories in Mo'olelo, um, that was something that we really I uh, wanted to incorporate into this exhibition of Kaula Pico um, to, to connect the ancient voices and the ancient heartbeat of, of instrument making and music and sound um, to the modern connections of what we think of in Hawaiian music today and how it has crossed across the oceans and the continents to become something that everyone around the world is so familiar with. Uh, but, but this is an example of the Ipuheke and, and when, we, when we think of the beats that, that make up that, that, uh, that ancestral connection. We think of the varying forms. So this is an example here. Just This was the, the original heartbeat, one of the, the original heartbeats of Hawaiian music um, through the Ipuheke, alongside many of its other complements of the ili ili, of the pahu, um, and the varying, um, varying instruments that provided that, that rhythm. But I, I'd like to pass it off to, to this, this group here, the Hui Ukeke Ao, um, um, started by Mahi Lapierre. We also have Kunane Wuten and Iyahi. Do um, who'd like to share a little bit about the, the significance of the ukeke, the musical bowl? Uh, we have uh, the one we have on right here is made out of kawila wood with hao fiber, and it's from the Henriks collection. A um, little different as far as string instruments, we had various percussion instruments. In Hawaii, we had one string instrument 
And the UKK is the only indigenous instrument, string instrument of Hawaii. I would like to thank the museum and Merika Venapukui for passing this song that we're gonna share. Um, Kao Pena Wong shared this song with us and he said, go for it, perpetuate it. So that's what we're gonna share with you right now. No, sorry. I do have the words right here and the strum. So we're gonna go through this. The song is based in Kauai and it talks about your loved one and the ferns of Makana and the, the frigid hala of Nawe. So we're gonna play that for you. Um, the UKK besides love songs was used for, for hula, for oli and mele. Um, we found songs about a flag poet, Ilani Palace, and other songs um, uh, that Ukeke was used for. Recently, a friend shared an article where their uh, grand uncle played it before he went fishing when there was a certain wind. So very versatile instrument during its time, and we hope to uh, keep perpetuating that as a hui and, and, as, a, and as a community. So we'll play for you Mele Ukeke. We do have um, Iliahidu and his instrument is made out of? Uh, this is made out of Ohika and the strings are just a nylon fishing line. Yeah. Kudanes? And uh, this uh, instrument I made out of Uhi Uhi and the uh, strings are uh, synthetic. Uh, this is my first UKK made, uh, made out of Iliahi, and the strings are uh, fishing line, 20 pound test. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, Mele UKK, Paloma, we have to take off our mask. Mele UKK, pop. Playing the ukeke, the mouth is an important part of this of this instrument. Could you share a little bit about what the the mouth does in playing this instrument? In, in some cultures, the resonator would be a gourd or a coconut. So you can probably not hear this too much. As soon as I touch it, in in Hawaii, we we didn't go to that um, the gourd as a resonator. The resonator is here. And as you think of other things where the breath is important, um, the shape of your tongue and mouth creates the sound. Um, some words are easier to play than others. Um, but yeah, the UKK is uh, something uh, we hope you would want to learn more about. So, mahalo. Yeah, mahalo. mahalo. That is so important when you, when you think about the Hawaiian instruments, the heartbeat, and then literally being the, the resonator, being your, your own body. Um, and how that is the voice that is coming through through this instrument. So, mahalo nui. Mahalo. The thing that I also love is that we see the continuation of what they did with the instruments, the Western style instruments, which were introduced and then became an intrinsic part of Hawaiian music. So, so that's a continuation of these traditions, and that's what we've been trying to get across in this exhibit. And what's, what's so clear to me, and as from a luthier's perspective, one who builds and designs stringed instruments, the ipuheke functions on the very same scientific principles of acoustics that the acoustic guitar does. Two chambered uh, bodies joined mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. with a puka, and the ipuheke, it's on top in the guitar, it's been moved to the front. Mm -hmm. And what's become really clear in the research is that the guitar in Hawaii is where the modern guitar really found its voice. Yep. In these hula ensembles that were circling the globe, playing for kings, playing for world's fairs, um, the acoustic guitar as played by 
Hawaiian musicians in the 19th century really went leap and, leaps and bounds forward. Yes, and in fact, it's not just that it's the guitar, but it's that the styles of playing it are what Hawaiians did. Right. They created kiho alu, they created slaki, and they created the acoustic steel guitar. Right. This is an instrument that had already existed in Europe and was known in many other places, but Hawaiians took it and made it something different and made it something special That's right. that the rest of the world responded to. And, you know, when I think about Hawaiian music, uh, a lot gets talked about the renaissance of the 1970s, but it's really clear to me now that the great swell in musical uh, culture and sophistication is a recurring swell that we can trace much of the music of the 1970s back to the 1870s. That's right. And the, the really seminal historic band of the Hawaiian Renaissance of the, of the 20th century, the Sons of Hawaii, yes. Eddie Kamai, Gabby Pahinui, Feet yes. Rogers, and many other uh, musicians who came through over the years, um, they, they looked back in time to the music of Nalani Eha in the 19th century. That's right. And this great wealth, this great reservoir That's right. That's of, right. of music. That's right. And we're so thrilled tonight to, to welcome to the stage um, actual members of this band. Yes. We have with yes. us Ocean Kauwili, who is a graduate of the Sons of Hawaii under Eddie Kamai, and a musician in Halehaku Sibari. And standing right behind you is Halehaku Sibari's great-grandfather's Gibson guitar that was played in Alfred Apaka's band and Alvin Kalelani Isaac's band for many, many years. So without further ado, we're going to turn the stage over to Ocean Kawili, Ledward Ka'apana, and Halehaku Sibri. Here we go. Um, to, I guess, best honor, uh, my Kupunakane Kuakahi, whose guitar appears inside there. Uh, he was a former bandmate of the composer of this song, Papa Kaleolani Isaacs. Uh, we're going to do a song entitled Auhea Oi. And if you guys at home are playing along, we're in a key of C. <laughs> <laughs>
It's a little wacky, a little wacky. But there's nothing like the hula. The yakahiki hula. Won't you come and try it? Won't you come and try it? The yakahiki hula. The yakahiki hula. Show them how to wiggle, how to jiggle, how to giggle. Chattanooga, Chattanooga. Shake it over here. Shake it over here. The last time I was actually playing in here was more than 20 years ago with the owner of this ukulele. And this ukulele was actually in here that long ago, I think, for the last time in the Hawaiian Hall. And I speak of Uncle Erika Mai. This ukulele being back here this evening along with another of his ukuleles, the Nahe Nahe, in the showcase as part of the exhibit Icon along with Gabby Pahinui started the group called the Sons of Hawaii in honor of Uncle Eddie and Myrna Aloha
Put him by the Queen. Hanaki Oki. It was the Queen's music that was had inspired Uncle Eddie for a long time. This one I do for Mrs. Kamai. Written by Uncle Eddie, along with Larry Kimura. Softly comes the dawn The winds of night are gone Now shines the morning dew And memories of you And like the morning dew I'll always dream of you Whispering to me In dreams across the sea
<laughs> DeSoto, I don't know what to say about that. That's, um, this, this, is, this is an amazing experience. I know it's enjoyable for everybody who's watching, but for us here, it's even more wonderful. And it's unfortunate that we can't have a live audience here at the event itself, but this is the next best thing. And soon we will, in time we will. In time we will, that's uh, absolutely I, right. You know, Marcus, uh, as he was playing the Ipuheke and, and talking about the UKK, he mentioned something that really struck a chord with me. He talked about this heartbeat, mm -hmm. this heartbeat in Hawaiian music and um, the Hawaiian musical arts that goes back in time to the beginning of time, really. Yeah, it does. Thousands it does. It does. Years. No, that's absolutely right. And tonight, I want to send a special shout out to uh, descendants of these many royal Hawaiian troubadours. Yeah. Who I've just heard are listening in from Aotearoa, from oh, great. Australia. Great. We even have Debachish Bhattacharya listening in from India. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, a steel guitarist who uh, learned from Tao Moy. Yes. And traces his musical lineage back yeah. to us. Yeah. Yeah. And, and see, what, what that also brings up is how many Hawaiian musicians travel the world, taught people all over the world, influence people all over the world. Some of them never returned home to Hawaii. Well, Joseph Kikuku. Uh, sadly, is one of those, those, those men who left in 1905, traveled up and down the West Coast, introducing the continental United States to a new style of Hawaiian string band mm -hmm. music and steel guitar mm -hmm. music. And it's worth mentioning that Makia Kealakai, the great innovator of the dreadnought Martin guitar, yes. and Joseph Kekuku, the inventor of the Hawaiian steel guitar, were childhood friends. Yeah. They both grew up running around this campus. Uh, Honolulu Harborside, mm -hmm. and in 1919 they traveled together to play at the Savoy Hotel in London, England. That's right, that's and right. They toured through uh, Marseille, through Paris, and after that tour, uh, Joseph Kikuku came back and lived on the East Coast, and this great style that he had invented, that he had taken, taken all over the world, resulted in the first ever electric guitar ever made, the Rickenbacker frying pan, which we have in this exhibition. And it's sad to note that Joseph K. Kuku passed away in 1932, the same year that this guitar was first invented. Yeah, and this electrification of the steel guitar was absolutely pivotal to the development, as we've said before, to the development of the electric guitar. And from the development of the electric guitar comes rock and roll, which is influential all over the world. That traces back to the Hawaiian instrument, and it again. Goes, it goes one step further in detail, and this, this exhibition is really about celebrating local family history, mm -hmm. which as we know now is global history. That's right. But the story of uh, the, guitar, the steel guitar transitioning into the Spanish style electric mm -hmm. guitar is the story of another Maui-born steel guitarist named yep. Freddy Tavares. Yes. And Freddy Tavares worked with Leo Fender to invent a guitar capable of going to the stratosphere with its tone, the Fender Stratocaster. Yeah. And in this exhibition, we have the actual Stratocaster given by the Fender Guitar Company to the Tavares family. Right. It's owned by Tasha Tavares and her husband, Kenneth Makuakane. It be because it is a commemoration of Freddie Tavares and his role in that entire development. Exactly. And the other cool thing that Freddie Tavares did was he played, he was a session musician. He was an expert musician in addition to his ability as an engineer and a designer. He played the electric steel guitar for one of the versions of the Warner Brothers cartoon theme song. So everybody in the world knows the merry-go-round broke down and Looney, the Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies themes. And he's playing on he's that. He's, he's the opening chord. And that's Freddie Tavares. And that's another thing that Hawaiians were involved in that nobody knows. You know, another really profound tradition in Hawaiian music that I've been learning a lot about is the tradition of, of composing songs. Yep. And, and there's a special type of yes. song in Hawaiian music, a mele inoa, mm -hmm. or a name song. Yes. And we have tonight uh, a very special debut of a name song written by Kenneth Makua Kane. Um, for Joseph K. Kuku. Oh, that's this wonderful. This is a really special uh, occasion. You know, as we look back through the repertoire of people, composers like Makia Kalakai, mm -hmm. um, other legendary composers, we see the songs written for all kinds of occasions. Absolutely, and the ability to compose a melee impromptu, on the spot, was something which was very tre treasured and revered in Hawaiian culture. So going back centuries, the ability to witness something or to, in honor of somebody who you have just seen, 
to create a melee for them that's intrinsic to Hawaiian culture. And we also saw that with Nalani Eha, the Heavenly Four. We saw that, you know, uh, Lili Kalani and King Kalakaua, Prince Ledeo Hoku and uh, Princess Like Like, they just composed things. They were composers. They just would make things up. And be particularly for Lili Kalani, it was, she said it was just so intrinsic to her, it was like breathing or eating or sleeping. She just created music. And in many of those cases, the songs that they wrote, which by then were somewhat Western in style, were for events, they were for people, they were in honor of a particular visit to some place or anything like that. Hawaiians created music all the time. And Hawaiians still create music and we still hear music. And the fact that Joseph K. Kuku has had a song for him is wonderful, it's marvelous, and, and he deserves it. And we've got some of the best best musicians here to play it tonight. Yep. Right, in such a historic place. <laughs> um, and you know, as I take a quick second to mention that um, one of the contributors to this exhibition uh, is the Hawaiian Legacy Foundation and Myrna yes. Kamai, yes. Eddie Kamai's wife, who is carrying on the tradition of celebrating yes. Uh, the incredible legacy of the Sons of Hawaii and Eddie Kamai. Yeah. Eddie Kamai is another really brilliant hakumele, a composer of songs. Yes. And um, that was so moving to hear that last composition. And you know, I also want to say too that uh, Eddie shifted from being a musician to being a documenter of Hawaiian culture and Hawaiian musicians and Hawaiian music. And with his wife, Myrna Kamai, who had loaned things to this, this exhibit that we're, we're standing right next to right this minute, um, they created these documentaries that are, are absolutely treasures for preserving the music and the names of some of these people who in some cases weren't very well known. And Sam Lia, who was an aged Hawaiian man from uh, Hawaii Island. He'd learned to play in the late 1800s. He was an example of that very early style that we've talked about. We have here in this exhibit, Sam Lia's violin. And probably people wouldn't think of a violin as being part of Hawaiian music, but in the late 1800s, it was, as was the flute. The so banjo, the mandolin. we acknowledge these earlier instruments, which kind of went out of favor, but which were also very much a part of Hawaiian music and at that time. In large part, they went out of popularity because the steel guitar and uh -huh. the ukulele got so famous. But it's time to turn it over to our very own Hakumele, our musicians, our Hawaiian stars tonight. Please make welcome Kenneth Makuakane and the band. You know, it is, it is said that us as um, hakumele, as songwriters, our job is to document our current history in our own generation so that generations past our lifetime will know how we existed, how we loved, how we communed, how we bled our hearts for each other. And so I was just reading on the wall of this wonderful place and it said that there was a gentleman, Henry Holmes, who was a um, board of trustees here back in 1897. And he says, it is just as important to document and very imminent that we deliver our ike, our knowledge, as much as it is important to discover that knowledge. And so tonight, as we discover new mele that was written, we will also unpack the mele of a wonderful man named John Kikuku, who discovered the steel guitar, developed the, the steel guitar, and unpacked it and went out into the world to share the glory of what he had found. And so this is a mele written by Dr. Keola Donaghy. Um, and I was fortunate enough to put the leo or the ea or the melody to this song called Himele no Joseph Kekuku.
pila kaulana o ka ainga.
Joseph K. Kuchu. Málo, no. Málo. I think it was, was it last year that we lost Cyril? We, we write a lot of um, Mele Noah, name songs for those, those people that we hold dear. And so, again, Dr. Kiolo Donaghy and I put this Mele together, Mele Noah, for one of our dear friends who uh, passed into forever. And his name was Cyril Lani Pahinui. Ano hano ay manano ay na ulugahi kabe ay na na kupuna kaku.
special, special music happening here tonight, the Bishop Museum. And De Soto, I have to say, you know, about six years ago when I envisioned this exhibition for the first time, uh, my, my first title was Two Centuries of Sovereign Strings. And in talking to uh, Marcus and the team here at Bishop, we came up with Cal Le Pico. But really, the, one of the challenges in talking about Hawaiian music is the story is so, so huge. Yes. It's such a profound... Yes far-reaching story. Yes. This timeline that stretches around the walls of this exhibit hall could really take up this entire oh. museum. Yeah, no, this is, this is one of the things. We're covering a lot of very important stuff here. There's a lot of information in this particular exhibit, but it's not everything. No. Nobody could do everything. You've turned your life's work into documenting this and keeping track of it and spreading the word about it. Yeah. This exhibit does that, but there's lots more. There's so much more to do. And you've got a foundation I to have, help do we that. We have founded a nonprofit organization, the Kalakai Center for Pacific Strings, dedicated to researching, restoring, and celebrating this incredible, profound, and enduring legacy of Hawaiian music and musicians. And I want to make a special point tonight, too, that this exhibition is possible only because this community came yes. together. Not only was it the Iolani Palace, and Curtis Iaokea's guitar, the Huli He'e Palace, and King Kalakawa's guitar, the ukulele of the Bishop Museum, the many, many instruments loaned from not only professional musicians here, but, but keepers of the family yes. tradition. Yes, um, yes. And so we want to send a special mahalo nui to all of the members of this community, the organizations, and the incredible, talented, devoted team here at Bishop Museum who against all odds this year, <laughs> let's just say this has been a heck of a year, DeSoto. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, we pulled through, and um, yeah. I just, mahalo keakua, mahalo nakupuna, mahalo this community, mahalo the lahui. We couldn't have done this yeah. without yeah. all pitching in and doing yeah. it together. Yeah, and there's a lot of people, and we were also supported in the community by financial help, too. That's right. Um, all of that came together to create this. I know you and I, are very proud of this exhibit. Like everything in this particular room, the long gallery, this is temporary. This yeah. will not be here forever. Yeah. So again, if this is something that you'd like to see, please make time to come to Bishop Museum to see this wonderful exhibit. And you can visit the, the Calakai Center for Pacific Strings website at www.kcpstrings.com. And we have educational outreach programs for Luthery for Children, we have a program getting stringed instruments into houseless youth shelters here on Oahu. Um, we have books, documentary films, many more concerts, no. lots to happen. Lots to we, happen. Want to, we want to close tonight's show in celebration of a song that was composed in 1893 by Eleanor Keikoa Ohivai Kalani Wright Prendergast. This is a song that's originally titled Meli Ai Pohaku, uh, now commonly known as Kaulana Napua. This is a song that has united the Lahui of Hawaii in restoration efforts, in um, political movement, political consciousness, as well as perpetuation of, of melody and song. Yes. And, and, and we pay homage to that song by incorporating the musical notation for it along the walls 
in the timeline that we created to help tell the story. So it's part of this exhibit as well. And we're so honored to have in our exhibition the actual ukulele yes. owned by Eleanor that very likely she used to compose this very song. And this ukulele is in the possession and the stewardship of my dear friend Douglas Pooloa Tolentino, who Eleanor Kekua Ohibai Kalani Wright Prendergast is his Hanai grandmama. And he is going to share this song with us now. We'd like to turn it back to the stage and our very dear friend, Douglas Pooloa Tolentino. And the rest of the musicians joining in our finale. Thank you all, everybody, for joining us for this wonderful presentation. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for supporting us. And we hope you've enjoyed it as much as those of us who were fortunate enough to be here in person enjoyed it just as much, I'm sure, as everybody at home. Aloha. We wanted Bobby on the third floor. Social distance. Yeah, Bobby. Or on the shark. Hidden. Or in the whale. We call you Jonah. musicians and music of our islands and uh, which uh, this is a good ending with this song because it talks about uniting our people in one mind in one place this place we call Hawaii and that mind of aloha to mind our aina and our people of this land song that was written by my great great grandmother Ellen Wright she wrote this song um, after the overthrow at the bequest of the uh, Royal Hawaiian Band members and the interim bandmaster, Mr. Uh, Jose Liborno. And um, she wrote this and published it in 1893 in the Hawaiian newspaper. And um, this is this goes out to my Hanai Mama, Lorna Kikoohiva Iklani Dun Prenegas.
Oh, you have to ask Kanaho. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you could hear it through the stream. Yeah. I'll see, see.
Just like. <laughs> <laughs>